Hey everybody, I hope you're enjoying this fine day. I wanted to show you this Rake P865, rolls right off the tongue, P865 liner lock knife from Rake. It's a knife I was attracted to initially because of its um, long and slender uh, Warncliffe blade. I've been very into Warncliffe's recently, and I've been wanting to try out a Rake for a while, and uh, this originally uh, came out only in Canada, or I guess when it when it was first dropped, it came out in Canada, and uh, that's how you got it. You got it through uh, Rake Knives Canada, and then it was uh, recently just kind of released into the rest of the wide world, I guess, because it started showing up in places like Blade HQ. So uh, I got one, and I'm very happy I did. Uh, what is the use of this knife? This is a gentleman's carry. Uh, EDC knife. I say gentleman's carry because it's long and svelte and it's light and it would go nicely in the pocket of a suit. Uh, this knife is made of G10 with steel liners. It's got a very thin liner lock here and it's got a uh, three and a half inch blade of 14C28N. That's a Swedish steel by the company Sandvik. All of that information, if you need it, is right there on the blade. The blade came very sharp. This has been uh, one of my main box cutters, uh, box breaker downers uh, of this year's Christmas season boxes. Uh, surprisingly, I thought a couple other knives I was testing at the same time uh, by cutting cardboard, I thought they would do better than this because this has a relatively short blade from here to here. And uh, you know, it's nice and thin, but it's not that thin. And this just excelled at cardboard cutting, at that sort of slicing cut. Yeah, 14C28N, this is your single uh, means of deployment, this thumb stud for righties. The deep carry pocket clip, which I like very much, is only set up for uh, tip up right hand carry. Uh, and this one, unfortunately, does not translate well for me anyway to the left hand at all, unless I do that because uh, I can't really get enough of the fat of my finger in there to grab that thumb stud to spidey flick it, or to mid middle finger flick it when I'm holding it left-handed. So it's pretty much a, a one-type deployment. Uh, this knife came in pretty cheap at 35 bucks. I should say high value, inexpensive at $35. Well worth it if you're uh, interested in the in the shape and the relative light duty nature of this. Um, I, I'm a big fan of this, the contouring of the G10 handles. It's like, I don't know if you'd call it contouring. It's like two giant chamfers that meet in the middle. And uh, it's very nice. The lockup is good. There's no play or anything like that. This. Uh, this liner lock leaf here is so thin at first it gave me pause, but I mean I'm not using this to do anything super outrageous, so uh, it hasn't been an issue yet um, One thing that might present an issue is the finish on the blade. It's bead blasted, which is I don't know. It's kind of gone out of vogue. I think um, it Was used heavily by Cold Steel for a while and, and Kershaw, but I think people find that when you look at the surface of a, of a bead blasted or any sort of blasted uh, surface, there are peaks and valleys, and in those valleys, moisture can accumulate, and uh, so a bead blasted blade can more quickly succumb to corrosion. Uh, but again, I don't live in a particularly humid environment, well, not all year round anyway, and um, I'm just not expecting to even carry this that much that uh, it's much of an issue to me. Uh, let me show you some other knives I think it compares nicely to. Uh, here's the one of my recent favorites, the Metamorph by Real Steel. It's about the same size and it looks like it's about the same DDU, you know? It's kind of a show knife, it's definitely a useful EDC knife, but nothing you're gonna wanna go to war with. This also has a very thin liner lock. This almost looks like it could be made in the same factory. I mean, those liner locks look almost, well, I guess we're dealing with animals of a, of a certain sort. 
Uh, what else does it compare nicely to? My, the other rake I have, the P801. I've been quite impressed with this. Uh, I put these two head to head in a cardboard cutting contest and uh, shockingly to me, this came out way ahead. This was nice, um, maybe not as sharp as this, maybe didn't arrive as sharp. This came with a polished edge, so they're doing something special to these knives. Uh, last one I'll show you, compares nicely, uh, price wise anyway, is the Tangram um, Orion. This is a Dirk Pinkerton designed little small Vikings knife. I, I love that shape. To me, it's it's like a little sax. So I love this. Uh, also compares nicely in terms of price, materials, and uh, blade shape. So uh, yeah, I think that this rake P865 is definitely uh, worth your time and money. Uh, just know what you're getting into. You're not going to be doing any heavy duty thrusting. I mean, that tip will go through much, I'm sure, but uh, it offers very little in terms of uh, uh, traction or, or gription or anything, uh, jimping to stop you there. And there's no guard to stop you or flipper or anything to stop your finger from sliding up on the blade. Though, however, I love uh, that double angle. It's perfect for your, your thumb if you're gonna cap the back of it, if for whatever reason you need to hold it like this to, to jam it through something. But uh, other than that, this is just a, a light everyday carry utility knife slash uh, uh, glorified box cutter slash gentleman's folder. And I really like it. And uh, I think it's definitely worth having, especially if you have a high value collection or a, uh, a draw towards Warncliffe blades. And before I close, I must say, just in looking at it right now, I get a, a Japanese vibe out of that handle too. So I just love how simple that is, how simple the lines are. Kind of like that. All right, everybody. Hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.